enough. I'm going to go ahead and record this so that we have not only the recording, but it's also live in the Facebook group. So I'm going to try to roll the social media out in like different chunks. So tonight, the social media, we're going to really talk about your posting, branding, apps that I use, um, apps that, you know, I love. We're going to talk about your vibe, your vibe attracts your tribe with what you're posting. We're also going to talk about expanding your network. Um, all of those things can truly explode your business or they can really hurt your business and maybe not so much hurt, but they can stunt your growth. Um, and we want every single one of you to have continued growth. Now there's a whole other area of social media. And I love that some of you were asking like, um, how do you have follow-ups? How should you follow up? How do you do invites? That's like a whole different topic on inviting, following up, making connections. I will do a completely separate training on that next month. And we will talk about inviting and how I follow up and how I have my system for that, how I keep track of that. Let me just say how excited I am that we are going into two pages on Zoom right now. I got to hit the arrow to see page two, which I'm super excited about right now. Um, so I will talk about those of you that had questions regarding the inviting, the process of inviting, following up with people. How do I keep track of people on Facebook, on Instagram, emails, all of that stuff I will do on another training. But again, tonight is really focusing on your social media and on an essence of what you post about. Because if you did not know this already, your social media is your storefront. It's your storefront. And your invites, it's important for you to know how to invite. But before I can teach you how to invite, if your social media does not align with what you're inviting behind the scenes, you're never gonna get yeses. And people are never gonna convert. Because if I invite Laura, if I go send Laura invite and I'm like, Laura, you got to join our team. It's amazing. It's the best team in the entire world. We empower women. We build businesses. She goes and looks at my social media. She doesn't see a community. She doesn't see a business. She doesn't see that I have this amazing boss babe group of women that I have virtual girls night in with every single Monday night. If she doesn't see that, there's a good chance she's going to say no because she's going to be like, what the heck is she talking about? Same thing with your fitness programs. You're inviting people to join you to do B100 Morning Meltdown. Join me, it's 100 day. They go look at your page, Tuesdays. They don't see a transformation. They see you next Tuesday when you follow up with them. They don't see a transformation. They're thinking, she's doing a program and she's asking me to join her, but I don't see anything. Um, for me, I'm not sharing a transformation about myself tomorrow. I'm sharing a transformation from one of our coaches. So it's not about just sharing you. It's about sharing other people, whether it's a client, whether it's a coach. I know Lauren, one of her girls, I mean, has lost 20 pounds within 20 days with morning meltdown. I mean, those are the testimonies that people want to see when you invite them to be a part of something. Hey, guess what? You guys, we have a retreat coming up that will blow up your business. You need to be there. You need to find a way. Every single one of you can be diamond in 10 weeks, 100% sure. Those are the things that people watch. So all of those people that Danielle and Jamie and Brittany are inviting from now until December, I guarantee you at least one, two or three of them will say yes in December when they see you at the retreat because people are watching your social media and they have to align. I've talked to a couple few of my new coaches and I'm like, okay, why aren't you hitting success scope? What's going on? And they're like, well, I'm inviting. And they're like, but I'm not sharing on social media. You can't pick one of the vital behaviors. The four vital, beha four vital behaviors of coaching. Oh, my computer almost fell. Oh, um, the four, okay, be the product. Share what you're doing, okay? It's not being sales, it's sharing the product. It's, you know, inviting. It's doing personal development. It's recognizing people. It's inviting. You can't just pick one and expect to be a successful coach. You have to be willing to do all of them. Every single one of them you have to be willing to do if you want to see growth when it comes to earning success club, growing your community, your fit club, your boot camp, your training group, your team, whatever you want to call it. And I guarantee you, if you ask any one of the leaders in here, they have had to learn how to change their social media up, how to shift the way they take pictures, the way they maybe like have branded things and, you know, so that they could connect with more people. Um, so I did make a little slideshow. I'm proud of myself because I do not like making slideshows because I am really, you guys, truly not crafty, um, but I'm also a visual learner. So I'm going to share this slideshow with you. Now I'm going to take moments away from the slideshow just to show you some other things. I'm going to try to screen share on my phone how I do things 
through some of the apps I'm going to show you. Um, so let's get this party started, this social media party started. I'm really excited about this. Um, so let me switch that over here. Social media, so this is gonna be a little interactive. So make sure you guys have a piece of paper. Um, the first part of it is interactive. Um, get your calendar out, get a piece of paper because you are going to take some notes right about now. Okay, so here we go, social media. Now, this is the great thing. Can I tell you guys a massive secret? Almost all of this stuff is in our new coach mentorship. Almost all of it. So if you haven't done it, that's probably why this might sound new to you, okay? So let's talk everything social media, get it girls, because every single one of you have the capability to have absolutely insanely amazing social media, but it takes time. It takes time, it's a art, it's craft, you guys, I have my degree in nursing. I have no degree in, in pictures, taking pictures, I have no degree in creating graphics on Canva, I have no degree in how to expand my network on social media. I have taught myself by watching so many YouTube videos that I can't even count, Googling things. I was not taught this. I found it myself because I wanted to grow and I'm a business owner and so are all of you. So take responsibility of your business, learn the art of social media. If there's something you need to know that it's not covered here, go Google it, go YouTube it. You can ask on our coaching link page, maybe someone else knows the answer. Um, but all of these things have really helped me tremendously. So you cannot, share you cannot make a post on social media unless you know who you are and this is literally day three day three or four of our new coach mentorship which is in our coach family page um and this is the color wheel and this is something that i have to do i evaluate myself every couple months um but what's your five and the five is actually a part of the jenna kutcher method um jenna kutcher does instagram training so if you want free instagram training make sure that you listen to Jenna Kutcher's podcast, Gold Digger. It is awesome. She talks about everything from expanding your network on social media, how to have an email system and email campaigns, because that's where it's at, is email lists. She goes over everything and guess what? It's free learning. So if you want to learn more about expanding Instagram and getting better at that and really just knowing how to run a business with tools and resources, make sure you listen to Jenna Kutcher. Um, I did actually purchase Jenna Kutcher's Instagram training so that I could reshare her content. Um, I purchased it last January. I did not finish all of it, but what I really took away from that was her JK five method, which is what are your five? Who are your five? So right now, I don't want you guys to think too much about it. And you know what? For some of you, if you've been around here for a while, you might be like, I don't need this anymore. I'm too cool for this. No, you're not. Okay. I want you to write down your five. So I want you to write down the five things that represent who you are, five things. Now the color wheel, sometimes like in the new coach training, I have you fill out the whole color wheel. But I know for me, like, honestly, I'm a really boring person. I love fitness. Like I truly love health and fitness. Like I could do it every day. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I love tacos. I love donuts. I love French bulldogs and I like fashion and I am obsessed with having a lot of friends. Like that's me. I don't there. And I only wear black and white most of the time. So it's not like I can even fill up the circle, but that's my brand and that's who I am. So I want you to write down your five. Who are you? Who is Laura? Who is Jamie? Who is Danielle? Who's Brittany? Um, who's Carolyn? Like write everything down. And you know what? If some of you are like, I can't think of anything. You can think of something. I want you to think of five things. Uh, like I said, all of you are business owners. That's one right there. Every single one of you is a business owner. Every single one of you do fitness every single day. That's a number two right there. And then think of your three other things. Um, if you didn't know this already, the two top things that are for engagement on social media is animals and kids. So if you have a dog or a cat or any type of fur baby or non fur baby, if you have a pig, I don't care what type of animal you have. Um, I know Brittany, Brittany is one of my coaches. She has like all of these puppies and I'm like, oh my gosh, she has so much engagement on her photos. I need some puppies in my house. But literally animals can be one of your five. If you have kids, let that be one of your five. That's one of mine is my family. So write down your five. And when you have your five, I want you to put your five in the chat box. Put your five in the chat box. Just type them out really quick. So Morgan said, army wife, boy mom, foodie, um, corgi mom, health and fitness coach. Love it. So figure out your five because you cannot move forward with your social media unless you know your five, okay? 
write down your five, 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 write them down and put them in the chat box. Okay. Um, Alex said, fashion, fitness, girl, mom, beauty, travel. Love it. Brittany said, mama of two girls. Um, Carolyn said, fur mom, girl, mom, nurse, wife, fitness. Uh, Jenna said, family, friends, fur mom, wine, food, photography, and fitness. Great. Okay. I love it. So those are awesome. I love all of those. Now hold on to those because you're going to put them into action. Those five things. Now I will say that when I first did this method, I had to tweak a few things because I realized I could really put in a sixth there. Like I could add in the, like the foodie meal prep, all of that fun stuff. But really I want you to focus on your five things that really inspire other people about you that would allow you to connect, you know, with your brand. And what you're going to do is you're going to implement a posting plan. Okay. Now what I mean by imp implement a posting plan is that this is next week. I took the calendar and I cropped everything out and I just put Monday through Friday. You're gonna make one post a day on each one of those five things about who you are. Because some of you, every, and this is just, this is me helping you. Some of you have the same selfie picture every single day of the week. Same exact position, same exact room, same exact location, same exact sweaty picture, same exact sports bra, same exact situation. You are missing an entire group of four other people that you are not connecting with because all they see is your workout selfie. There's a whole group of people that you're missing out on. You're missing out on those corgi moms. You're missing out on those people that love photography. You're missing out on those, that army group of people. You're missing out on those people that, you know, love to knit. You're missing out on a whole group of people because you're only sticking to fitness. And that is something that happens really often when you're a coach is that you try to, to promote the thing that you're trying to grow fitness, your fitness community, your fitness team, but then you're missing on that entire group of people that are your people. So if you love to travel, then give a day that's designated to travel, sharing pictures from when you travel or where you're going to go. Um, if you love fashion, you know, designate a date where you're sharing an outfit that you got and where you got it from and create engagement on that picture of your outfit that you love so much. So this is going to be another homework assignment is I want you to look at your weeks every single Sunday. Um, you're going to sit down and I want you to plan out your week. I'm not saying you have to plan out your posts. You don't have to plan out your post if you don't want to, but I want you to tell yourself, okay, it's Monday. Monday, I am going to talk about meal prep. Every Monday, I'm going to talk about meal prep because I know I'm prepping on Sunday. So every Sunday, I'm going to talk about meal prep. That gives me an opportunity to plant a seed, share a recipe, talk about my training group, whatever that is. Tuesday, it's Transformation Tuesday. That honestly should be on every single person's Tuesday is Transformation Tuesday, or you could do Transformation Thursday, whatever you want. Um, but if you're doing a program, every Thursday, you can have a transformation. I know I saw Allie Klotz's. I saw someone else's. Um, I think I saw Paige's, her gene picture with our 100-day gene challenge. Every single Tuesday, you could have a progress report of your program. Day one, day 10, day 20, day 40, day 60, whatever your days are, um, because people want to see the journey. And remember, one of our vital behaviors is being the product. It's not selling. It's you being the product, literally you showing your results. Um, and yes, you can intermingle those with maybe someone else's transformation. Uh, which is something I'm doing tomorrow. Wednesday, whatever you want. It could be Wellness Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday. Like you can pick it, but I want you guys to theme your week out based on who you are as a person so that on Mondays, you can connect with people that need help with meal prep. On Tuesdays, you can connect with people that maybe has had five kids and they're struggling to lose weight and they see your picture that you had five kids and you breastfed all of them and you just empowered them. Maybe someone sees your picture of your family on Wednesday you know, going out and having fun and you connect with them about your family. So this is really, really important. And this is a game changer because so often what I see happening is coaches throwing it on the wall, throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping it sticks, throwing a post up, hoping it sticks. And listen, you're not going to connect with your people if you don't do that. So figure out your five. And then I want you to designate a day of the week for that. Now, Sometimes what happens for me is I don't have meal plans and foodie stuff as one of my five, but occasionally I'll do that on Sunday night because I'm like starting off the week and I'll do like a meal plan or something like meal related on, you know, sometimes on 
on Sunday, but that's really it. So you can see here at the bottom, I said one post a day, five days, um, five days a week on both Instagram and Facebook. Don't kill me if you don't like Facebook, but I'm going to tell you right now that my business grew for my first two years, a six figure business grew on Facebook alone, not Instagram. Okay. So you need to be doing both. Whatever you post on Instagram, post it on Facebook. Now I will make one exception. And some of you have maybe seen this is that I only post once a day on Instagram. I don't ever post on Saturday or Sunday. I only post Monday through Friday on Instagram. I will post more on Facebook because Facebook likes messy. That's the truth. Facebook likes messy. They don't care about aesthetics like Instagram. Instagram wants things to look nice, prim and proper. That's just how Instagram is because it's a visual social media platform. Facebook doesn't care. They don't care what it looks like. I can post a picture of me with a booger hanging out of my nose and I'm going to get a hundred likes on it. Okay. They don't care about the aesthetics. They just want to see real. They want to see authentic and they want to just see your life. Facebook is warm market. So for example, this morning I threw up that we had a barbells and brunch meetup this Saturday on my Facebook. Did I post that on my Instagram? No, I put it in my Instagram stories though. Um, same thing if I, I posted that my husband and I had date night on Saturday. I did not post that picture on my Instagram grid, but I did post it on my Facebook because I have my family and friends over there and I'm just sharing my life. Um, so that's the only thing that I do a little bit different is I have my five posts a week and I will throw up other random posts on Facebook, but I know that I have to have those five quality posts a week. Um, and that allows you to plan, especially for those of you that work full time. Now you will also see that right here on the side, I say, I do stories a minimum of 10 a day, a minimum of 10 a day. If you want to get traction on Instagram, if you want to get traction on Facebook stories, either one of them, you need to have a minimum of 10. But let me just tell you how easy this is. You wake up, I do story. You drink your Energize. I do story. You do a workout shot one or two. That's two. I do stories. We're at four right there. A meal picture. That's five. I do stories. A picture of you doing the hustle coach life behind the scenes. That's six. You and your everyday life. That's seven. And then there's three more. There are your 10 stories. I literally could easily do like 30 stories a day. Um, but sometimes I don't cause I just don't want to bore people. Um, 10 a day. So one post a day, not including Saturday and Sunday unless you want to with Facebook, and then a minimum of 10 IG stories a day. So that is your implementing a posting plan. Now let me just check the chat box to see if I'm missing anything. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. Thank you all for sharing. Yes, I will share the slides as well. The slides will also, I'll share the slides, but they will also be in the Coach Family page, like the video will already be there. Okay, so moving on. Now, this I'm really excited about because I was thinking, how can I show you examples of what not to do and what to do on social media? And guess what? I'm going to show you mine because I don't want you, I think a lot of coaches come into this with this preconceived notion, especially newbies. And they're like, oh my gosh, Ellie's Instagram is so beautiful. I can never make mine look like that. I'm going to say baloney because you can. Um, mine were not good, but can I tell you a secret, you guys? My Instagram, my Facebook, all of my pictures were not good at all. But guess what? I still grew a business. I still hit Success Club 20 every single month. I still built a team because I shared. So let me preface this, is that your social media does not have to be perfect to build a business. Your social media does not have to look like mine or like every other top coach to be successful. What it takes is you being willing to share your journey on social media every single day. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Yes, it does. I'm showing you how to make it look better. I'm showing you how to make it look better. But for my first one to two years of coaching, you're going to see, I used a lot of hot pink. I was not all black and white and I did not use presets and I did not care. My pictures were blurry. Um, and I still was successful. So I don't want any of you to think that it has to look this way for you to get there. As long as you start sharing your journey and you start being the product, and being consistent with what you're doing, you're going to be able to help people and you're going to be able to grow your community and your team. So the no-nos, the do's and don'ts. Now remember, I still had people sign up with this picture on the left. I still had people sign up with this picture on the left, but I'm showing you this is an art and this is where you can learn to improve. 
And I will say that most people nowadays are growing their businesses. If you pulled people are growing their businesses on Instagram and Instagram is visual. Most people, I will say probably 70% of my clients and coaches are coming from Instagram right now. And if you want to do Instagram, you have to visually, visually, you know, change up your pictures and make them attracted to people. Because what happens is, is it's not the caption that usually catch, it's usually not the caption that captures people. It's the picture. So you want to draw them in and then they're going to read your content. So this is just a picture of me as a brand new coach. This is a great picture. It's my meal prep. It's great, right? It brings you in. But I am telling people I'm doing 21 day fix extreme, which says beach body. There's no picture of me. Great. It's my food. And I have pictures of my food. Um, I just shared one this morning and there's words all over it. One of the big no, no's is do not fill your picture with words and text. It instantly turns people off. So now look at the picture on my right. It's me holding all of my meals prepped. Okay. Totally different picture, but people see my face and they see the person behind the invite. So when I invite people to join my community and learn how to meal prep, they can go look at my page and see my face and not just a picture of food. Now, do I still post pictures of my food? Yeah, I do. Um, you can go look at mine this morning and it does not look like this. There's no words on it. Um, and I can even show you what it looks like as well if you guys didn't see it. But this is just showing you the difference. You don't wanna do text all over your pictures. Um, you can do food pictures, but just don't put a whole bunch of text all over it and definitely do not say the name of the Beachbody program you're doing. Do not say 21 Day Fix Extreme, okay? Okay, so scrolling down, the next no-no. You guys, can you tell that I loved putting pink font all over my pictures? It was like the most favorite thing of mine. So here's a transformation picture. So here's a transformation picture. Again, let me preface that I still hit success club. I still grew a team with these graphics, but I'm showing you the improvement, especially when my business began to really grow on Instagram. It's because I changed the way my pictures were looking. I changed the brand of them, the vibe of them so that I could really connect with people. So the picture on the left, it's a great transformation, but I have words all over it. People are instantly distracted. They see the words. They don't see the transformation. They don't see that I was 148 pounds and then 123 pounds. They don't see that. They just see like, oh, there's a hot pink word up top and they see a website and they see all of this stuff. It looks salesy. It screams sales because there's a website there. If you look at my picture on the right, it's a picture of me and it tells, it tells a story. It talks about six years ago being six weeks postpartum on my third child and it tells a story with the transformation. This is another one. And these are just comparisons to show you how my social media has evolved when it comes to branding. So this is a great one because of meetups. Here's a picture of our meetup. I know that a lot of you do meetups or maybe it's just a community picture, but it's showing you the difference between let's cut the fluff and just focus on the people. Um, I have all of this text and I have all of this information, again, it screams sales. Like I'm trying to get people to come be a part of something or purchase something. And then the picture on the right just shows the heart of who we are. It shows fun, it shows sisterhood, it shows community. The picture is clear, you can see people. The picture on the left, it's a blurry picture. It's not gonna be visually attracting people in. These are just some other pictures of the coach opportunity. Um, on the left is my coach invite. When I was a brand new coach, I had no idea how to invite to coaching. I just would create a picture like this and slap it up on Facebook, but I still got people. And I just want you to show you that, you know, and I, I just want to keep pressing that point is that it doesn't matter um, to the extent of how perfect it looks. This is really just, I'm teaching you the art of growing your social media. And this is a big part of it. Um, Cause I don't want you guys to feel discouraged. Like, oh my gosh, I can't do that because you can, you just have to start somewhere. Um, but this is a picture of the coach opportunity. The picture on the left is join our imperfectly balanced mentorship. Um, you can barely see the picture of the team. There's like three or four different pictures. If you look on the right, I'm pretty sure I would want to join or read the post on the picture on the right of the four girls that are in the green grassy field and they look super cute. I would probably want to read that post. The other one, I instantly am turned off again because it looks salesy to me. It looks salesy because it has too many pictures and has too much verbiage on it. 
Next is another coaching. Um, so here's another coaching post. So this is me. This is back in 2015. Now I wanted to highlight this. Now there's reasons behind I chose some of these pictures. This was August of 2015. I became a coach. Um, this was exactly, I became a coach in October of 2014. So this was less than a year, less than a year of me being a coach. And I was leading my own coach opportunity info sessions by myself. I was leading them on my own. I was posting about them. I was inviting people. Now, do I have a lot of people liking and commenting on this? No, I had eight people. One of them is one of my coaches right there. And probably the seven comments were coaches as well. But this is me sharing about the opportunity. You can't really see much. You can't see the picture of myself. You can't see the picture of the meetup. Um, it's too busy. The picture on the right is me. It's me inviting people to come learn about coaching. Um, it's a picture from one of our retreats. It's clear. Um, it's more branded. It's my color. And it's inviting people to dream big and come learn about this coach life and how it can change your life and how it's changed mine. Um, you can see there's a difference. I had eight likes on the one and I had 580 plus on the other one. Um, and that is because it draws people in. Oh, I did a double one. I'm going to delete that one. Whoop. Okay, next. Now, here's some other no-nos. And I want to show you this one because... I know that a lot of you and even myself, we can get hung up on the likes. We're like, people aren't liking my stuff. People aren't commenting. Well, first of all, you have to forget about the people liking and commenting because a lot of people are watching your content and seeing it. They're just not liking and commenting. Um, but the first don't that I want to show you is this picture on the left. This is a bag of Shakeology. Okay. Do not take a picture of your Shakeology and post it like this. Do not do that. That is a picture of me doing that. And I'm pointing myself out. Um, this is me showing a picture of Shakeology, saying it's a vitamin super shake with my website and posting it. Do not do this. This looks salesy and this will instantly turn people off and this will instantly put you into the category of being a salesperson and that's not what we want. The picture on the right is me, again, as a brand new coach. And it's me taking a picture of my plastic shopping bags from Publix, okay? It is not a great picture. But I want you guys to see something. It had 65 likes and 27 comments. No one cared that the picture was blurry. No one cared that I was making this odd face and that you couldn't even see the groceries. I was just sharing that I found this new delivery service for my groceries and how awesome is this? The funny thing is, is I had 27 comments and two people signed up from this post to join my challenge group because they just, we created conversation and we started talking about grocery shopping and all of that fun stuff. So, you know, these are pictures that I would not personally do now because I've learned the art of changing my graphics, putting a brand on them, using filters, but the picture on the right still drew people in because I was sharing my journey of, you know, getting healthy and getting fit as a mom. But please, especially the picture on the left here, do not take a picture of your product and share it. Do not take a picture of your box and open it up and post it on your social media because people will instantly put you into the category of being a beach body coach or being that salesperson, and that's not what we want. We don't want you to be dismissed as a coach because we have so much to offer um, outside of just having incredible fitness and nutritional supplements um, because it really does come down to the art of sharing you, sharing your journey, sharing your brain, and sharing your mission. Now, um, here's some other pictures. I was trying to take as many examples as possible um, because it's so important. So here's another do and don't. Here's a picture, again, brand new coach 2015. Um, this would be a great, great post if I did not mention that I was doing the PIO program, taking a picture of the PIO workout, plus holding the shake in my hand and three other pictures where you can't even see half of my body in them. Um, not a good picture, not a good post. This is not going to draw people in. Now look at the picture on the right. That's a pretty cool picture. People like that picture. It drew people in. It visually drew people in. And I was able to talk to people about my fitness groups and coaching through this picture, um, two different platforms. And I was able to draw a lot of people in because of this picture. And this was a pose from one of our programs, Morning Meltdown. Um, so you can just see the difference of what might draw people in and what might actually push people away. Now, get creative. Now you're probably asking like, how did you make those pictures? How did you make those apps? How did you do this? How did you do that? Well, let me first tell you before I move on is that this picture on the right of this pose, that is done with a video. 
it was not a picture. I hit video on my camera and I videotaped it. And then what I did was I just went into my phone and I just at the bottom where you could click edit video, I just moved the bottom of the video and I just took a screenshot of each move. And then I had the screenshot of each move. So then I could just filter it and just make it look better. But that was not an actual picture. It was a video that I screenshotted one of the moves. So now let's get creative. Um, these are the apps that I love. These are the apps that I use. These are the apps that are on my phone. I screenshotted my phone so that you could literally see the apps right here. Okay, now do I use all of them? No, but at times I will use some of them for different purposes. So I'm gonna go through each one um, just so that you can, um, you know, I might go ahead and screen share my phone with you guys on this so I can show you really quick kind of each app um, and how it works. Now, let me preface TikTok. I'm not going to show you TikTok because I did a tutorial on TikTok, which is in our coach family page. So if you want to learn TikTok, go there. And again, let me say this. I've been a coach for five years in October. I am just now using TikTok. TikTok. You do not need to use TikTok to be successful. You do not need to learn that right now. What matters most to me and to our, our leaders is that you share your journey, share your journey, Invite, 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 earn success club, and then learn all of these other skills, okay? That's what's important. I don't want you to be um, confused by all of this fluff um, because some of it is fluff and you can spend way too much time. You can spend way too much time doing TikTok. You can spend way too much time playing around and playing only, which is a planning app I'm gonna show you. So you need to give yourself timers and if you only can work an hour a day for coaching, you probably don't have a lot of time to do TikTok. You probably don't. You need to get your invites out first. You need to share on social media and then play around with TikTok after you've done all of your business behaving, um, business moving behaviors first. Okay, so let me go ahead and screen share this with you. Um, these are the apps and I'm gonna go through each app on my phone just so you can see what it looks like. I'm not going to give you tutorials in each one because again, that is going to take way too much time, um, but play around with it. I learned these apps from playing around with them. Um, so let me go ahead and ooh, do this really quick. Clear all. I just have to get it open the screen mirror. Okay. Share the screen. Okay. iPhone. So I'm going to switch to my phone and I'm going to screen share my phone with you. Here we go. Okay, so you guys should see my phone right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I keep everything in create. So I have a little album right here that says create and here is all of my apps, okay? So the first thing is, is I'm gonna walk through my day for you so you know exactly how I use these apps and what ones I use the most. So. The first thing that I use pretty much right now, all of the time, now I don't do this all of the time, but I have been trying to do TikTok at least every other day, um, if possible, I use TikTok. So again, I'm not gonna go into TikTok. You can go look at this on your own. I did a tutorial. Now, the second thing that I use is I use Lightroom to preset all of my pictures. So most of the time, whatever picture I use, I will use Lightroom. Now I'm gonna show you Lightroom last because I'm gonna show you how you can purchase a preset um, and then use that on your phone. Okay, so the first, the first one here is Pick, Play, Post. So Pick, Pay, Pick, Play, Post is where I do these videos. So a lot of you might see these videos here of when I make a collage, um, when I do a video of our team. It's so simple, I will just save all of the photos and then all you have to do is upload them. So you can see here, I have these pictures of all of the girls from our training group. I just upload them here. I don't use music um, and I just keep it short and simple. I keep it less than a minute. And you can change all of the, you can change all of the width of the time at the bottom. So as long as, let's say that we go to my first one here, if you click you know, the one of Brittany, up here at the top, it, you can change it. So you can do the timing of it, you can do this display of it, um, and you can make it maybe a two second hold or a one second hold. Again, I make my, I have all of my videos less than one minute so I can share them on Instagram. Um, but a little tip is I put a picture at the front and I put the same one at the back. So I do want the same picture in the front and the back 
so that when it's not playing, that the same picture shows at the end when it's not playing and when it is starting. Um, so this is where I use and make all of these videos specifically. Um, again, you will see this is another tip for time is the only picture that is filtered is the first and the last one. That's why I use the same one. You can see that this team picture is filtered to match my brand and to match my font, but all of these other pictures down here, all these other ones, they are not filtered. I am not spending my time filtering all those pictures. So I just do the first one so that it matches the grid on my Instagram, okay? So that's pick, play, post. That's how I make my videos of team-wide stuff. And I do not put music to that because again, I'm being smart with my time, I'm being efficient, I'm only editing the first picture, putting it in the first and the last position, and I'm not doing music because sometimes you will get blocked. So that is pick, tap, go. The other great thing with pick, tap, or pick, play, post, sorry, I'm saying the wrong word, pick, play, post is that it will upload it in HD. So um, I do believe that you have to pay a little bit more for that version, but it makes your videos more clear. Um, and I would prefer to have a clear video than a blurry video. So pick, play, post is that one. Okay, so the next app is Pick, Tap, Go. So Pick, Tap, Go, I have not used this one for a very long time, but let me say this. I use this one for probably the first two, it's paused, it's loading. I used this app for probably the first three years of my business when it came to putting a filter on my pictures. Um, presets, Lightroom was not around. Um, and until I purchased a, until I purchased a preset, I just used pick tap go to put, you know, the preset filter in mine. So let's just say, um, let me find one here, a picture that I have. Um, oh, look how cute Ella is. Isn't she adorable? She was in kindergarten there. Okay. So let's just say I have this picture of Ella, which I had already filtered it. So I have this picture of Ella. I can go to edit. And then if you don't want to purchase a preset, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second. If you don't want to purchase a preset, um, you don't have to. Again, remember, I don't want you guys to spend the money. If you don't have it, there's ways to use free work resources. Again, I use this app for my first three years. Is you can go down here and you can pick one of these filters and just use the same filter on every single picture so it looks the same. So let's say I'm going to do cool it down. Cool it down softens it. Okay, it softens it down a little bit. And then you can um, play around with it. So you can use the bottom feature um, and then you could overlay stuff as well. So if you're like, hey, I'm gonna overlay pictures. So this is a great free, Pick Tap Go is a great free preset filter app that you can use to put filters on your pictures. Again, I use this for the first three years of my business, okay? Um, I got, actually, I probably got a preset last January. So my first, yeah, three and a half years. Um, pick collage. I'm trying to think what I use for pick collage. Pick collage is just another app that you can use um, to create. Oh, I do for pick collage and photo grid. I do my side by side. I do my side by side transformation pictures. So you can see here if I do a side by side, I'm going to click two pictures here side by side. I don't like the way those side by side go. So I'm going to expand them. I also don't like that it's outlined in white. So if you go to this part right here, the, the squiggly line, see that one in the middle? Okay, Zoop. there I go. So there is my picture and then, you know, I would probably align it up and then I would click done. So this can do your side-by-side -side pictures for you, this app can. Okay, so moving on, whoop. Let me get out of there. Next app, I'm gonna go a little bit faster. Whoop, because you probably have questions. Um, is photo grid is exactly like pick collage, it's just another style of making a collage. Now. When you see my IG stories, you're probably thinking, how does she make all of those like cool IG stories that she makes? Well, I use the Unfold app. Now, Unfold and Story, both of these ones down here, they're pretty much the same, but I tend to like Unfold better. So let's open up Unfold. I'm not gonna show you how to do this, but I'm gonna show you what you can do um, so that you can start playing around with it. So you can see here I have a section for you to be a coach for a week. So I've created all of these different templates in here that I can change around, use different pictures. Most of the time I've created them and then I just switch out the pictures. Um, and that's, I just have them here and I just switch them out. You can see I'm right now I'm using these ones. Um, and then I'll just add in like these were pictures I used for a summit. Um, you can see if I go to my nutrition one, I have nutrition ones that are set up that I can use. 
And these are all in Unfold. And I just have them and I'll just share them on my IG stories. Let me preface, do not use these on your Facebook page or your Instagram. They're not meant for the sizing. These are made for Facebook and Instagram stories and that's it. Um, if you want to use something like this, you need to create it in a different sizing because it's not gonna show up. Um, you can also do videos here. So look, you can also do add in videos so people can see your workout moves, um, which is pretty cool. So this is Unfold. Um, this is where I've made all of my recent, all of my recent ones I've made in here. Um, you do have to purchase, I think for like a dollar or so, you can unlock more fonts. I always unlock the better, the better fonts. Um, before I do TikTok, I'll say this as well. Um, I do TikTok, but I also will just intermingle moves of the day. So I have a workout one and you can see here, I have a workout one. Um, let's see if it shows. And it's just me showing some moves from morning meltdown. Um, and then you can see I have other moves there. And then I have a B100. And this is just a great way to make your stories draw people in. Again, these are not for your actual, um, your actual like pages, not your pages, but like your grid or your Facebook like main page. Okay. Um, story art is almost identical. If you look at story art, very similar. It just has some different things here. This is free. Um, you can play around with this. They have some cool ones as well. I just, I have found my groove with the other app and I just tend to use that one a lot. Okay. So those are all of those apps. Now go to the second page is Moldiv is another good up at the top. Moldiv is another really great app for filters. You can look there. Cut story. Cut story is say you make a video, say you make a video and you need to chop it up to fit into Instagram or Facebook stories. You can click a video. Um, and I'm just going to do this one. Say I'm going to do this video and then you can chop it up. So you can click Instagram, chop it up in 15 seconds, or you can do Facebook, chop it up in 20 seconds. So that will actually chop your video up so that it, it cuts it up so that it fits within the story. Okay. Um, so that is cut story. Next app is InShot. So I make all of my videos, a lot of my videos, besides using the pick, play, post, I also use InShot. InShot's another video that I love. Um, it has great editing tools. Uh, you just click video, and I don't know if I have one in here. I don't have one recently, um, but it's another great platform to use. I've done collages on here as well, collage videos. I've done my workout videos. It's just another great app. You can speed it up, slow it down, put filters on it. Um, it's just really finding your preference for the videos. But again, I use InShot a lot as well. Um, okay, let me go to the next one. Um, fonts. A lot of you had questions about how do I change the fonts on my text. It's this app right here. It's this fonts app. Um, it's just called fonts. And this is what it looks like. So this is how I changed my fonts on my, my post, if you see them. Now you can't type it out on your computer. You have to type it out on your phone. Um, and then you can copy and paste it, but it is this app. This is what it looks like. It says fonts right there. Um, and that's how I change the, the fonts on my, on my posts. Some of you like have seen lately. Um, and the final thing now I will say this, I don't, I don't use this a lot. I know a lot of coaches highly recommend this and there's two different ones. One's plan only and one is plan. Um, I tried out plan only. I'm going to show it to you right here. Um, for those of you, remember how I talked about, remember I talked about what are your five, you're going to make five posts, five posts a week. Well, here's an example of that. So I will upload my pictures and it will allow me to see what my grid looks like because I want my grid to follow my brand. So this is currently what it looks like right now. Now I have some unscheduled ones. So you can see here that I have a picture of Allie to share her transformation. It's not filtered yet. Um, I have a picture of our team. I'm trying to figure out what team picture I want to fit for the coaching day. Um, I have a girl gang picture and then I have a picture of me. I already know my four posts for the week. I already know what I'm posting tomorrow until Friday because I have them here and I can visually see them and I can figure out what message I want to have with them. Um, this is plan only. There's also plan. I have not tried plan, um, but it shows you like what the grid looks like. So for example, I already posted this meal prep one, so I'm going to delete that one. Um, I posted to see what it looked like, but you can also move them around. So if you're like, oh, I don't like the way that looks, I'm going to move that there. Um, and it just allows you to see what your grid looks like because 
I don't want to have, you know, I don't want to have a transformation on top of a transformation. And I don't want to have a picture of me like this on top of me there. It's too similar. It's me, me right on top of one another. So this is again, you guys, I, I just started playing around with this in the past like two or three months. I don't want you to spend time on this if you have not locked in success club and if you haven't finished your one hour a day. Just gonna tell you that right now um, because these things can really become time stealers. Um, so these things are extra tools for you when you've done your coaching work, okay? Just gotta put that out there. Um, okay, so the next app is Lightroom. This is my final one. I use this one every single day, every single day. And this is how I filter all of my pictures is Lightroom. Um, again, remember I said that you can use PicTapGo. PicTapGo is going to put your, that's like a free filter, um, but filters. So let's go to this one right here. So I just recently used this picture. Now let me show you the before and after. Before, after. I have a filter on it, okay? This is a preset filter that I purchased on Etsy that I then used and uploaded to my Lightroom mobile app. So you would get Lightroom mobile on your phone. And the great thing is with this is like, say you can see the before picture, and I'm not gonna show you how to use Lightroom because you can follow the directions when you buy a preset and they show you how to do it. But it is so simple because all you do is copy and paste the preset on every single picture. Now, sometimes you've gotta edit it. Like maybe, maybe for me, you can see all these edits at the bottom. Maybe for me, I'm too orangey. I can make it really black and white. I don't like that. But you can see at the bottom, you can play around with stuff and you can make it like more orangey. I don't like any of that, but it's something that you have to play around with. But if you buy a preset, it makes life so much easier because you can see, for example, pretty much all of my pictures, I will preset. Um, you can see all of these half of these pictures I haven't even used yet some of them but they're in my preset file so that I do have them to use same with like I have a coach sisterhood one and I have pictures that I can pull you know to use for presets um, and they make a huge difference especially if you're trying to you know visually visually let me see like look at that one look at the difference huge difference huge difference and on Instagram that that is important Facebook honestly doesn't care about it but Instagram it does. So if you're really trying to grow Instagram, which you should be, um, you should be growing, growing both. You should care aesthetically what your pictures look like. So that is the apps that you want. Now I'm going to share one more thing with you really quick. Um, I'm going to share with you, that's not it. I'm going to share with you my desktop. Okay. Now I'm going to go with and show you the presets really quick. Um, so here's just an example. Can you see this? Laura, can you give me a thumbs up if you see this right here? Etsy. Okay. So this is a preset because it's five bucks, five dollars. So cheap. Now look at all of this. They have so many different ones. This is not the one I purchased, but I like this one. It's like white and bright and pretty. But some of you maybe want a, a one like this. It has warmer, a warmer tone. These are five dollars. Now the most important thing is this is make sure it says mobile Lightroom. You do not want to have to edit these on your computer. I will never edit a computer or edit a photo on my computer. It takes too much time. Um, and you can see here, they can give you before and afters. Like you can see the difference. Um, I actually had to purchase four or five of them to get the one I wanted because once I put them on my picture, I'm like, oh no, I don't like that. Um, but just all you have to do is type in, all you have to do is type in mobile Lightroom presets, go to Etsy and look at all of them. There's a gazillion presets. I'm telling you, it is worth the $3 or the $5 or whatever it is because it's going to allow you not to have to do so much work. Like a lot of people love, you know, this, this color. It's tan, it's bright blue, it's aqua teal, like $4, $4 right here. So I would say this is definitely worth the investment because it makes your pictures look professional. It really, really does. It's probably one of the best things I did because it was taking me too long to use Pick, Tap, Go to fit, filter mine. Now I just copy and paste the preset, put it on my picture. I just tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit brighter, make it a little bit blacker, take away some of the orange, and I have my preset. So check out mobile um, presets on Etsy. It's totally worth it. 
Um, and yeah, Morgan said you can definitely find some online for free um, if you don't want to use Lightroom. Definitely. You can definitely find free ones. Um, you can definitely find free ones. And they tell you, like, look at this one. It says materials come with instructions. They tell you how to do it. I followed the directions and I learned how to do it. So make sure you just follow the directions and they all come with directions on how to do this. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, I want to buy some more presets because I love all of them. They just make life so much easier um, when it comes to your pictures. Okay, so moving on, now that I showed you the presets, let's go back because I am so sorry. We're going to go over the hour. I know this is so much content. Um, okay, so Jamie, can you see this back on apps for branding or is it not showing it? Okay. So my pro tip for all of you was to purchase a preset filter for your photos on Etsy so that all of your photos have the same brand. Pick something, maybe the first one you get you're not gonna like, get another one. I would say maybe find a free one if, if financially you don't wanna make the investment, find a free one. If you don't like it, maybe you look at one of the $3 ones or $5 ones. And then remember, you still have to craft it. I found one, but I still had to um, brighten it to make it whiter and I still had to make it blacker to bring out the black in my clothing. Um, so I still have to play around, play around with it. So ultimately, ultimately, let me check the chat box. Um, Christina Wilbur said, I have like 20 before I found one I actually like. Yes, yeah, sometimes that can happen. Um, so ultimately your vibe attracts your tribe. What's your brand? You can see mine. I took a picture of my grid and this is something I want you to do before, before you make the changes, before you make any changes to your social media, I want you to take a picture like right now of your grid, take a picture of it. Um, because I want you to compare the growth of where you are now to where you can go with your social media, but really for you to be, I be able to not only identify your vibe and your brand that you want to have, but also remember your JK five method, your five, I want you to be able to look at your grid and say, I'm totally missing the mark. So for example, if you look at my grid, you can see I have a picture of Steven. That's our date night. So that for me represents our family. So I have a picture of my husband. That's family. Sometimes I have my kids. Um, I have a picture of community, which represents fitness. I have, you know, pictures here. I have one, two, three, just on the screen. I have three transformation pictures, three transformation pictures. Um, I have one, two of community. I have one of meal prep. I have one of my husband. The one of me in the braid, that's fashion, that's beauty. If you swipe it, it's pictures of me and my daughter. That's another family picture. Um, I do have two meal prep, actually, that one. Um, I have a picture of flex results. I have a motivational one of me holding up this saying. It's a yoga mat. Um, literally, this is showing every aspect of who I am from family to fitness, to friendship, to food, and to fashion. It shows everything. Um, and that's what I want to see. If Laura said, I want you to look at my grid, if I can't find her five, then she needs to change it up because that means that she's missing an entire population of people because she's only sharing on that one thing about who she is. And there's so many more qualities of her than just fitness or just the business or just that she's a nurse or that, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I'm just making things up. Um, so look at your grid and compare it. Now I wanted to show you some pictures of some coaches. I wanted to show you how really this business has nothing to do with selling, but it has everything to do with sharing. Now you can see mine. Now I purposely did not take pictures of any of our coaches because I don't want you guys to compare to anyone to our team. And I don't want you guys to compare. I want you to see the growth. I also took pictures of coaches that have all been coaches for less than one year, less than one or two years. And they're all earning six figures. And that is something that I'm really trying. If you're one of my coaches, I'm really wanting to equip all of you, not only to have incredible communities, but to build amazing businesses that bring financial freedom to your family. Um, and all of these coaches were just like you. All of them did not have a social media platform. So here's two. The first one is um, now do not follow coaches if you're going to get into the trap of comparison. First premise, do not follow coaches if you get into the trap of comparison because it will steal your joy. So the first one is Kate Schultes. I love her. Um, she has not even been a coach for two years, not even a coach for two years. And she is currently in the running for a top 10 team. Um, she retired her husband at 15 months into coaching and she quit her full-time teaching job at nine months. She's worked this business. 
But do you see selling on her social media? No, you don't see a bag of Shakeology. You do not see a fitness program saying Beachbody. You see her life. You see two transformation pictures. You see her working out with her husband. You see her sharing the life of coaching and the hustle. She started off with 400 followers on Instagram. She now has 18,000 in less than two years. She's done the work. She showed up and she's learned her tribe and her vibe. And she's been able to create an incredible business in less than two years. Um, Fire for Life Fitness. She's been a coach for literally um, just about one year. Just about one year. She is a five-star qualifying coach. And when you look at hers, you don't see Beachbody. You see her life. You see her picture of her husband. You see a picture of her kids. You see her transformation. You see her drinking wine. You see fashion. You see her life. Um, she also, little purpose behind using her as well, is she started Instagram the day she became a coach. She didn't even have an Instagram open yet. She opened her Instagram the day she became a coach and she ran with it. She started off with zero people and went to 15,000 within one year because she figured out her vibe. She figured out her brand and she did not sell. She shared her journey. Um, she also worked in, um, I believe she just retired, but full-time working, full-time working mom in a very high demanding corporate job with two kids. And she was able to do this. And I said, Kate also worked full-time as a teacher and commuted to work almost two hours morning and night. Um, and they both started literally from scratch on Instagram. Okay. Um, also, another thing is both of these people were discount coaches. Both of them started off as discount coaches. Moving on, both of these coaches as well started off as discount coaches. Um, and neither of them had an Instagram, but they were willing to commit and to do the work. Both of these coaches all also last year went from diamond to 15 star in one year. Both of them did. Both of these coaches, um, Jess Dukes and Emily Falver, both went from diamond to 15 star in one year. Um, because they showed up and they did the work. Um, you can see here that if you look at Jess, she's pregnant. She is full term pregnant with her third. So if you're a coach on here and you say that you have kids and you don't have the time, you do. You just have to find time for what's important to you. Um, if you're pregnant, you can be an incredibly successful coach. Um, you just have to share that part of your journey. Emily on the right is a new mama, and you can see that most of her feet is of her baby. You don't see beach body, you don't see fitness, you see her life. She's connecting with new moms. Um, and Jess is connecting with lots of prego mamas. Both of them started with pretty much nothing and grew exponentially in a year because they went all in. And all of them have, you can see all of them. Jess has a very bright, um, Emily has very much muted with pinks. Um, they all have a different brand. Um, moving on, here's one more. This is my last one that I wanted you guys to see is um, Kelsey Hill on the left. Kelsey Hill on the left is like 21 years old, 21 years old, and she is in the top 20. So if you are a college student listening right now, or if you are 21, 22, 23, and you say you can't be successful in coaching because you're a college student, yes, you can. Um, you, even if, you if you're broke, you can find people that need this community in their life, okay? Um, so Kelsey Hill, listen to this. She has 80,000 followers. In a matter of like two years, she has grown to 80,000 followers. Um, and you can see her feed. You don't see anything beach body. She's very high fitness. A lot of these pictures, if you scroll to the right, it's a workout video. Um, so that's how her technique is. A lot of them are very much, she's very much fitness influential um, more than anything else. And then Tasha on the right. Love Tasha. Tasha was in our morning meltdown test group. She is a perfect example of a coach who did not have a business, went all in with Morning Meltdown, and it exploded her business. Um, you can see her transformation right here. That's Morning Meltdown. That's her committing to the test group. It completely radically changed her life personally and professionally. She has now 60,000 followers, and it all started with Morning Meltdown. Um, and I believe she, she's like an elite coach. She's already locked in elite. Like she started her growth with fitness. Um, so those are some people that I love because they don't sell, they share. 
um, and they do a beautiful job at sharing their journey and making you connect with where they are um, and where they're going in their business. So I'm so sorry, it's 10.04, I'm gonna keep going. Um, so moving on now is expanding your network on Facebook because this was a question that I had. Um, and I know a lot of you have these questions and you gotta expand your network. So you gotta share, sharing is your storefront. You gotta be willing to invite, we're gonna talk about inviting on another training. But listen, you've got to expand your network. You cannot have the same 10 people looking at your pictures every day and watching your IG stories. I am still here today because I have done these things every single day for almost five years, five days a week. Um, I started off Facebook with 400 and I believe, I think it was 462 friends on Facebook. I now have 5,000. I have to go in there every day and unfriend people to add new friends because I want new eyes on me. So expanding your network on Facebook. Again, if you don't like Facebook, you're gonna start using Facebook, okay? Because Facebook is your warm market, okay? I love you, I want you to see growth and Facebook is your friend, I promise. Um, so you wanna be adding three to 10 friends, new friends on Facebook every single day. Um, the best way to do this, if you wanna track it, is take 30 times three, you need to have 90 new friends a month added to your Facebook, 90 new friends if you want to track it. Um, that's what I did so that I knew I was growing. I was actually blocked a few times for adding too many friends on Facebook, but I didn't care. I just kept adding, adding, adding. So you're probably asking, how did you find friends on Facebook? Number one is I looked at the suggested friends by Facebook. Facebook will suggest friends to you, and that's what I looked at first. Again, let me preface. If you see that the friends that Facebook is su suggesting is friends with all of Danielle, which is a coach on our team. Like for example, if I go and look at the friends that Facebook suggests and I see that Danielle's friends with all of these same people, I'm not gonna friend them because she's most likely invited them, okay? So, you know, be smart when you're adding people. Don't add Facebook or don't add Beachbody coaches. If you add a whole bunch of Beachbody friends, your feed is gonna be populated by Beachbody coaches and friends. So, you know, follow them if you want to follow them. Honestly, I wouldn't, um, you know, but friend suggested people. A lot of times the people that Facebook would suggest to me would be people from high school, people from college. It would be a mutual friend of a mutual friend. Um, and I also did not friend male, um, male men as well. I would actually, I'm trying to defriend all of the men on my account right now so I can have more space. Um, the second way that I would add my friends on Facebook is friends of clients. So if you have a list of clients, what I would do is I would have, say, my list of five clients, my five challengers, and I would go to their friends. I would go to their friends on their page, and I would just go through their friends. And I'd be like, oh, she's a mom of three. Friend her. Oh, she lives in Florida. I'm going to friend her. Oh, she's a nurse. I'm going to friend her. And I would literally remember your five. Remember your five things that are who you are. I only friended people that were in that umbrella that were in that scope of five because I wanted to be able to connect with them and I wanted them to be able to connect with me. Spouses, friends. Now I can't really talk about this because my husband got Facebook last year, so I never really could friend his friends. Also, I've been with my husband since middle school, so we have the same exact friends. So I mean, um, but surprisingly, some of his coworkers have friended me and they have signed up on their own, but I try not to, you know, we have the same people. But that is a great way as well. You know, if your husband went to, you know, a different high school, friend some of his friends that are women, um, and that could expand. And then the last one, this one was really, really beneficial for me in the beginning. Now, you have to be careful because people have become aware of this, is kind of poaching, is joining a group and then just friending everyone um, for the sake of trying to get business. Um, you want to really be careful with that because these groups are protected and you know, you just want to respect them. So I would join a Facebook group and I would just participate in it. Like there's a couple moms groups that I would participate in. Um, there's actually some of the groups will say like, Hey, it's Friday business day, drop your business in the comments below. You can drop your business on Fridays. Like they honor that there's women who own businesses and you can drop that. So join Facebook groups. Um, you can friend members in there. You can join a French bulldog Facebook group. You can join hiking. Think about like things that are your interest and join those groups and you can meet friends in there so that you can consistently add three to 10 new friends on Facebook every single day. Um, I would say pretty much every single day I can send out 10 Facebook story invites from new people that I've added pretty much every single week um, because I'm constantly adding new people and getting them you know, to look at me and to have eyes on me. 
Next is expanding your network on Instagram. So there are three different ways. Um, these are three different ways that I've tried. So that's why I'm sharing them with you is the first one is Instagram, um, which is the five, three, one, AKA Shailene Johnson method. And if you listen to a lot of coaches, a lot of coaches do 50 a day. Um, that is what I started off doing was, was 50 a day. This training five, three, one, AKA Shailene, Jane, Shailene Johnson method. I posted it, the video like yesterday in our family page, but it's also in our new coach mentorship as all. Well. Um, so it's also in there if you haven't listened to it, but it's pretty much five, three, one. It is liking someone's photo, liking someone's like five photos, commenting on three and following them. So let's say I found Danielle, I hashtagged, you know, fit mom or, you know, fit registered nurse. I found her. I'm like, Oh, Danielle's really cute. She lives in Florida. We get a, we would totally, you know, be best friends. I'm going to go like five of her photos. I'm going to come in on three and then I'm going to follow her. So a lot of top coaches, I did this for a while. I did this method. I did the 50 a day method. Um, this method is a great way. And this is how I would say most coaches are growing their network. Growing their network right now is the 531 method. Um, 50 a day. I know Amy Rada did this method. She was a top 10 coach last year. I spoke with her at Summit. She did 50 a day and then she did 50 follow-ups a day. So she did a total of 100. It was 50, 531. And then she followed up with 50 right after those first 50. So this is a great way to do it. Um, now something that happened with me when I was doing the five, three, one method is because I was doing so many of them, I was getting blocked for liking and following. So I actually changed mine up where I didn't follow them, um, because I wanted to keep my ratio low. So I just did the likes in the comment and I would just do, um, I would just do two likes and one comment and I just changed mine up a little bit. Now you're not going to grow as fast. I don't feel like but I was getting blocked a lot. So I just changed up my method a little bit, but I will say the 531 Shailene Johnson method works. Um, I did it and I don't do that many now just because of blocking features. Um, but this is something that pretty much most of our, most coaches do now. And I was just talking to, talking to one of our coaches in our elite mastermind and this is what they teach everyone to do is the 531. So it really is very popular. Um, the other method is Jen's method per day. Um, Jen's method, I love Jen. She actually, her training is in our new coach mentorship as well. Um, and it's, she is a beach body coach and she like just, she's so smart with Instagram. She's grown hers organically. She has like 50,000, um, followers. And she's, like I said, has grown hers completely organically. And a lot of other coaches have used other things. I've used third parties. I'm going to talk about those in a second. But what Jen did per day is she would do 200 follows, 50 likes, and 50 comments. She would do that every single day, five days a week. And then on Saturdays, she would unfollow the people that didn't follow her back. The only problem with this method now is that of these third parties, Facebook, or not Facebook, Instagram is blocking people. So you have to be careful with following this many people in the day because there's a good chance they're not going to follow you back. So if you asked me, like right now, if you're like, Allie, what method would you follow? I would say do the 531 because if you're following 200 people a day, um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to unfollow all of them and you could end up with having like 11,000 people that you're following and only have like a thousand follow you. Um, the app Captivate, Captivate is an app that they were using. I believe that one got shut down and that's where you could unfollow people. Um, which is a great way to unfollow people quickly, but it's not the safest way just because Instagram is really, really cutting back on using third party platforms, especially ones that are very, you know, you know, Autobot ish. Um, yeah, it did get shut down. Yeah. Um, it got shut down. So, I mean, the gents method would work. You could, would just probably have to manually go in there and unfollow the people that haven't followed you back. So I know Jen still does this method and she does it all organically. She does it herself. She doesn't use a bot. Um, but I would say the five, three, one is your best bet 50 a day. If you want to grow fast, if you can't do 50, pick a number that you can do. Maybe it's 10 a day. Maybe it's 15 a day. Maybe it's 20 a day, but pick a number that you can be consistent with. And I will say this, and you probably don't want to hear this. Instagram takes time. It takes a lot of time to grow Instagram. A lot of time. It takes consistency. So if you choose to do a method for a week and then don't do it, for three months, you're not going to grow. You have to be really consistent. Instagram growth is just like beach body growth. 
it's a compound effect. You just have to be consistent. Um, third party platforms. Okay. So there's three different third party platforms. These third party platforms are platforms that help you grow. Um, oh, thanks Morgan. I forgot to mention that cleaner app is a great for seeing who follows you and who doesn't follow you. So, um, cleaner app is what Morgan said. It's just cleaner app. And you can see the people that are following you and not, and you can unfollow the people that aren't following you if you wanted for all the ones that you followed. Um, but as for third party platforms, um, third party platforms are great, but sometimes they can really mess you up. So there's 21 social, there's jumper and there's stem social. So I know personally a handful of people that use stem social, a handful. Uh, my, two of my success partners use it. They've never had any issues with stem social. They use it. Um, I use jumper and I got shadow banned on day two of using jumper and I completely lost my Instagram when I used jumper. Uh, I just started using 21 social like four months ago. So I'm currently using 21 social, um, because I personally needed some help with my Instagram. Um, I don't have an assistant and I needed some help to to get more eyes on me, likes, specifically likes and follows. So I just started using 21 Social like four months ago. I have not had any issues with it, but I did with Jumper. So I really feel like, I will say there's a lot of people that you're gonna hear a lot of coaches who say, um, they're gonna say, don't use that, organically grow. And you know what, you guys, for almost all of my career, I used organic growth. Um, and I just needed something more. So I started 21 social. I haven't had any issues with it. I've been doing it for four months. Um, Kim Fitzpatrick was the one that told me about it. She has been using it for years. Um, I love Kim Fitzpatrick. So she's been using it for years. It's a Canada based one. Um, but you can use, if you want to use them, use them, but I will say use them at your own risk. I use jumper and I got shadow banned for three weeks. Uh, you know, sim social is another one. I'm currently trying out 21 social, but I will say this. Um, I will, I will say this though, is my likes have not gone up using 21 social. My followers have gone up. The reason why I I've seen a massive jump, a huge jump in my likes anywhere from going from 200 and 200 to 300 average to now I'm hitting like 400 to 800 on a lot of my posts. It's because I am engaging more. I'm engaging a lot. Um, I'm engaging like an hour a day using not just 531, but just engaging with people I've invited. I am commenting on their stuff. I am watching IG stories and commenting. I'm just spending an hour engaging um, on people's content. And that is it. And I really feel like that is what's allowed me to get more exposure onto my page recently because I'm showing love and I'm getting love back. Um, because if you want engagement, you've got to get en engagement back. Um, so I'm looking, Daniel said, Lauren said, just sign up for 21 social. Do you like it? Is the growth good? Yeah. The growth is good for 21 social. I would say the, the growth that I've noticed is my followers, not my likes. I didn't notice any growth in my likes because I've been really watching my Instagram. The likes that I've seen are coming from my engagement because the people that are liking it and commenting are the people that I'm commenting and liking on. So I feel like it's helping my following but I don't know if it's helping my likes. So I don't know, you know, it has brought in some people though. It's brought in people that have followed me and I've messaged them and they've actually become clients. And I know that they're people from the platform, but I mean, I don't think they've helped with engagement on my post. And honestly, that's where it's at is more engagement on your post, which leads into what I just said there is expanding your network. Do not post and ghost. No matter what, when you make a post, you need to engage for 30 minutes after for growth. This is hands down. Besides adding people to my network every single day, this has been probably the, the biggest thing that's made a difference in my Instagram specifically is not posting and ghosting. Um, because I know how easy it is to get busy with life and just to throw something up there and then be done. And this hurts your growth so much when you make a post and go MIA. So even if you can't do it for 60 minutes, do it for 10 minutes, do it for 15 minutes. There's been times where I've made a post and my kids have come running in and they've interrupted me and I've deleted the post because I'm like, I can't, I can't engage with people. And 
if you want people to give attention to your content, you need to give attention to theirs. Um, so this is something also that I learned in the Jenna Kutcher. She was like, whatever you do, do not post and ghost. And this is another reason why if you're only making five posts a week, one post a day, you should be able to have purposeful time to make your post and then engage after you make that post. Um, it, it truly makes all of the difference. So yes. So, um, great question. So Candace said, when you engage for 30 to 60 minutes, do you have a method for who you engage with? Yes. So I actually, I've played around with this a lot. So I do a couple things. Um, usually for six, depending on my time, I will do the first 15 to 20 minutes I'll invite. So I will go through my feed and I will see like, okay, who's liked my stuff, who's commented and I'll invite, I'll just invite for 15 to 20 minutes. I have an Apple watch. So I'll set a timer on my watch and I'll say, okay, depending on how much time I have, I really try to do 60 minutes. I'll do, okay, I have 20 minutes and I am going to just go through my feed, work from my bottom up. And I just go through people that have liked my stuff, commented, and I'll invite them if they look like a potential. When the 20 minutes goes off, then I will go to my stories. I will go to my stories on my Instagram. I'll set my timer for 20 minutes and I will just go through stories and watch stories. I will literally just watch stories for 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and I'll just like respond. I'm like, oh, that's a cute outfit. Where'd you get it? Oh my gosh. And I'll just talk to people. That's the connecting. So I've invited. Now I'm connecting and I'm, you know, cause that's going to get people to come watch my Instagram stories. If I'm watching theirs, they're going to come watch mine. Then the next 20 minutes, um, which is like 20, 40, 60. So that puts me an hour is those next 20 minutes. I will spend going through my collections. I create collections. Um, this is on a totally different training, but when I invite people on Instagram, I put them in collections. So I put them in an invite folder and then I have two folders after that. I have a potential client and I have a potential coach. So this week, if I know that I'm really heavily trying to get people to come, up, come to my coach info session, I will go to my collections tab on my, um, let me just shut this down so I can see you guys. Um, I will go to my collections tab in Instagram where it says potential coaches and I will go through all of that. So I'll show you guys what it looks like. Um, so let me screen share and I can show you guys exactly what I do. Um, share airplay, share this. So what I'll do is I'll go to my Instagram. Let me just go here. Okay. So I'll go to my Instagram here and I'm just going to show you really quick how I do this. So I'll go and I, this, just so you know, this video of how I connect is on our new coach mentorship. It is, it's on day three, just so you know. So I'll go to the bottom. This is my first 20 minutes and I'll just work my way through. I'll work my way through all of the likes and comments and I'll comment. There's someone right there. I'll click her. I'll see if she's a potential and I'll just scroll through all of these people for the first 20 minutes and I'll see if I can invite anyone. Just go through all of them. And it takes time. It takes 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes it's quicker. I'll go through. Then the second half is I'll go through my IG stories. Go through these and just watch some people. Okay. Go through them. Then my collections. So collections I save over here into my saved. And you can see here that I have follow-up coaches, follow-up clients. And I will go to, let's say I go to my follow-up clients. And I will spend 20 minutes just engaging on all of my follow-up clients. These are all people that I've invited in this tab. I've invited all of these people and they've all gave me their email. And that's how I, I do the follow-ups for the last 20 minutes is I just engage on the people that I've invited. So if I know that I need to get recruitment for clients, I'll spend 20 minutes every day engaging. And it's not always 20 minutes, you guys. I don't always have 60 minutes, but if I have 30 minutes, I'll do like, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, or I'll do like 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. But you need to spend that time instantly after you make a post. And that's, I think that what Lauren said is, um, is after you, she said, what do you do to engage right after you post? It's literally right after. So I make a post and I go, if I can't engage, I don't post. I can't. Um, and I just don't do it because it's a waste. It's a wasted post. No one's going to see it. The goal is to get your content 
up for people to see it. So if you want people to see it, you got to engage and show the love. So that's how I do it. I scroll through, invite people, then I go to the IG stories, and then I go to one of my collections tabs for the people I've invited, and I show them some love to hopefully get their eyes back on me and remember, oh my gosh, she emailed me. I better go check my email or I forgot to respond to her. Um, it's just keeping you in front of them. Okay. Um, and now really now just questions. If you guys have questions, I'm so sorry. This was a really long training. Um, okay. Do you find a time of day that is important? Okay. So this is a really great question, Laura. And I will say this is a total trial and error. If you have the business, if you have the business option on Instagram, if you have the business option on Instagram, and it will actually tell you your insights. I've noticed that mine personally do better in the afternoon. Like mine do when I make a post. Usually like two to three is when my posts do the best. So that's when I try to make my posts. Now, I did some science and I played around because I, I like science, scientific proof, is I was like, okay, I'm going to make my post every single morning at like 7 to 8 a.m. every day. Well, guess what? Within 30 days of doing that, my posts were most viewed at 7 to 8 a.m. because that's when I was posting, that's when I was engaging. So what I would say to you, and this is something that I've discovered myself, is you need to find a time that you can post that's best for you, that you can engage. Because if you can't engage, it's going to be a dud time. So I noticed for me, I would so rather post at 7 or 8 a.m. and be done with the day. I would so rather do that. I would rather do that. It's just easier. But I don't have time to engage then because my kids, I literally, if I post when I wanted to post, I would post at 645, 7. My kids, I'm like in full kid mode from 7 to 9. I can't engage. I can't. And I actually tried this last week. I made a post, I think it was Friday morning at 7 a.m. And I didn't engage. Uh, and it was a tanker. It was a tanker post. It was bad. Um, but then when I posted in the afternoon, and I had 30 minutes to 45 minutes to engage, it did way better. Um, so I would say, pick your time, stick with your time. If you guys are following the method, five posts a week, it's gonna be easy for you to know what to post about. So you're not gonna be scrambling. Like you're not just gonna throw something up there hoping it sticks. You're gonna have purpose behind what you're posting. Um, and you can still like do real time. Like I think I posted a picture last week, um, some of my coaches know I went live in my PS page and I was talking to them about this mentorship that I'm doing. And I took a picture of me right after I went live because I knew it was a day I was going to talk about coaching. And I shared a picture of me in that moment. And I knew I was going to post at 2 PM. I shared about what I went live about this mentorship. I want to do, how I want to take our team to the next level. And it was my Thursday post because I talk about coaching on Thursday. Um, so it's not like these, posts that I schedule out in advance, I just know what I'm going to talk about. So it makes it easier for me to have like focus, you know, and not scrambling. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, Laura said, do you find a time of day that's important? I answered that. Shannon said, oh my gosh. <laughs> Laura said, like when you post follow up. Um, does that answer your question? Okay, perfect. Do you guys have any other questions? I just I want to say thank you for being on here for this song. Go ahead, Laura, you can ask. Sorry. Okay. So I do, I just recently started Lightroom. So if I can figure that out, anyone can, cause I didn't even know how to add to stories when I first started coaching. So that's FYI. <laughs> um, my question is though, I still have not figured out for the life of me of how, when you post an Instagram, if you want like spacing or if you want like, again, a lightning bolt to like be in between like your paragraphs or sentences, how to make it not all like go into one blob. Okay, so like you're talking about like a post, like an actual post. Okay, yep. so I'll show you that, but really quick, before people get off, let's take a picture really quick um, before everyone gets off, okay? You ready? Because <laughs> I know I see people jumping off. Picture and then I'll show you how. Okay, so you ready? One, two, and, oh, I see everyone's faces popping on. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, and three. Wait, my phone's not taking a picture, hold on, keep smiling. Okay, I got it. Okay, um, so that little break that you're talking about. Okay, so you're gonna have to go, what it is, is it's a, um, you have to go on to, let me see if I can Google it. You're gonna have to Google it though, okay? And it's what I did was I Googled it and it's a little like copy and paste space. And you have to put the copy and paste space in between each, um, in between each, sentence that you want it. So for example, I'll show you what mine looks like. Um, 
but you're going to have to Google it. You have to Google. Let me see if I can Google space, how to create the space, how to create the space in text. Um, but I Googled it. So you're going to have to Google. I can't exactly, I don't know how to in space, um, how to put space to HTML. Um, but what it looks like is, I can't find it. Um, let me, I might have to get back to you on that, Laura, because I, I know how to use it now, but you have to Google it. I know that sounds weird. Um, how to create a space in code. Um, I'll look for that and I'll post it, Laura, because I have it on my phone, but I can't share it. Like I found it on Google and you copy this thing and then I put it on my phone as like a shortcut. So all I have to do is hit like ZZ. And every time I hit ZZ, it puts in the space. So it just puts the space in between everything. I know that sounds really weird. So I'm going to put that as my call to action is to find that space, the, the website for you, and I'll share it with you. So that's my homework. I just don't want to spend too much time on that, but I'll find it for you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Jeanette said, this is literally blowing my mind. I'm so happy it's blowing your mind. So glad you love it. Um, oh, you can type in. Lauren said you can type it into apps for life. Laura, look in the chat box. And Laura, Lauren just said it. Um, Shannon said invite verbiage is where I get stuck. Um, yes, please share. Check that app. I will share it, though. I will look for what website I use. But I know Lauren just said use apps for life. So it could be there. Oh, yeah. She's showing it right now. So go to apps for life. Um, as for inviting, I'm going to say this. So Shannon said invite verbiage is where I get stuck. Um, so the invite verbiage, that's going to be a totally different training. We do not have time to go into that. Inviting is a whole other hour and a half training, most likely. Um, bottom line is this. I'm just going to say this about inviting to close it out. Is inviting is all about just your confidence and it comes with your belief and I will never give you guys a script for inviting ever. I will never give you guys a script because I talk to, you know, I literally today, do you know what I did today? I sat down today and I spent, I spent like a couple minutes and I made invite videos. Look, I have like four of them and I redid mine and I have one, two, three, four. I have four invite videos and I don't even like, I just talk to people and I don't like put a script behind it. I just talk to them and I share with them like why I'm so passionate about this or why they should be a part of it. Um, so as for inviting, I would say practice with your upline coach. I think I've said that to one of my coaches before. I'm like, Hey, invite me, like send me a message and invite me. Like I'm watching your Instagram stories because it really does come with confidence I think it was, um, I think a long time ago, Christy Gomez, she's one of our Star Diamond leaders. She, we were talking about inviting and she sent me her script and I'm like, girlfriend, that is way too long. You got to cut that in half. Like it was like a novel. And I was like, you got to cut that in half and you're telling them too much information. You're telling them all of the goods before they're even asking about it. So you shouldn't be telling them that they're getting weeks of meal plans and all of this stuff. Like you keep it short and sweet so that they keep coming back for more. Um, but just keep practicing it. Again, if I'm not your upline coach, invite your upline coach. You know, invite them like they're watching your Instagram stories. Invite them like they liked your post. Um, it really does come with confidence. But I will do a training next month on inviting, the invite process, following up with them, how I do that. Um, and a couple of tips and tricks on how I, you know, stay consistent five years into the biz with inviting, but know that I share my invite, my invite videos on day three of new coach mentorship on connecting. I show you how I do it on Instagram and how I do it on Facebook, literally what I kind of just showed you right there. So check those out, um, because they will show you how I do that. Um, and that's really it. That is it. So thank you ladies for being on your fabulous for staying on for an hour and 33 minutes. Um, I hope you guys loved it. I hope it just opened your eyes to the possibility of social media. So your takeaways, your call to actions is find your five, schedule out your five, pick your apps, find a preset, um, you know, start expanding your network on Facebook, on Instagram, and most importantly, stop posting and ghosting and taking time to really engage in those people and in their lives, because that's what's ultimately going to allow you to grow your business. 
through sharing, connecting, inviting your brand, all of it, your vibe is going to attract your tribe. You just have to start learning these skills and, you know, taking action with them. So thank you guys. You're the best. See you guys next week. Bye.